Oh, I don't have the board today. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Young Hustlers. It's Thursday at noon East Coast Standard Time. We're on the Cardone Zone. I don't know where you're at, but this is the spot where we always come to spend a little bit of time with you to help you get your money right, to help you get your 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 confidence right, your motivation. Yeah, give me the board, man. I want to draw on this today. Uh, but most importantly, this show of, of all the shows that we do on the Cardone Zone is, is really about like how you can get your, your young hustle, like how you can actually make money with that. And so people like to talk about the grind and the hustle, but you have to be focused in the right areas if you want to make money. I mean, I think at the end of the day, most of the people that are watching this show right now, most of the people that follow Grant, they want to make money. And so can you change the, the number to three, the number three rather than spelled out on this? That'd be cool. Um, and today we're going to talk about three ways that you can make more money. Like these are uh, very simple, actionable things that you can start doing today that will help you make more money. Last week we did a show on how to bank your first million and so many people were reaching out to me on, on Instagram or whatever and they were saying, oh my God, that show was awesome. I really need help with the income piece right now. Like, like you, you said that everything was focused on making more money but I'm having a problem making more money. And so I thought it was uh, fitting today to do the show on three ways that you can make more money. Uh, like there's probably 50 ways that you can make more money. But the easiest thing you can do is follow these three steps because they don't require uh, an investment of money. They don't require uh, a long runway. Like these are just things that you have to be thoughtful enough to do and just do the work behind it and it will yield you great results. If you have questions on the show today, the topic is three ways to make more money. Uh, call 305-865-8668. We'll take your calls live here in the studio. Johnny, bring that board over here so I can, so I can um, draw some notes here. So the first thing, like the, the very first thing that I wanna tell you guys, it's the most important thing about making more money. Can we all agree that you wanna make more money? I'm, I'm guessing you're nodding your head right now because most people want to make more money, but the problem is, is their circumstances will not even permit them to. Let me explain what I mean. In order for you to create more income on demand, you need to be in control of it. It's really hard if you have a $50,000 a year salary and no opportunities for bonus. It's really hard for you to make more money in your existing job. Okay, which is why uh, Grant talks about, you know, join a multi-level marketing company or try to find some type of thing that allows you to actually create income. Uh, the, show, yeah, the show last week on how to bank your first million basically just says like, dude, like you need to figure out how to make money where you're at uh, in the vehicle that you're in. And if you're not in the right vehicle, then you need to bounce. Because what you need to come to terms with is like, what do you really want to get out of life? Everything changed for me when I did this. I said, I want to make big money. Not because I want to buy shit and not because I want to like spend money and go places. Although those are all cool things that you can do when you have money. Uh, the thing that I wanted to do was I just wanted to have freedom. I wanted to be able to get to a point in my life sooner rather than later where I could work because I wanted to and not because I have to. And so... What's important is if you're making a $40,000 a year salary right now and there's no opportunity to make more money, then you need to have that question, that conversation with yourself and say, what is really important for me to accomplish in life? Because if you want to make more money and you don't see a means to use your $40,000 a year job right now to get you there, then you're literally wasting time. And this message is a bit contrary to what a lot of people talk about, you know, love the skin that you're in, you know, uh, enjoy life. Like, dude, I, I want to get rich fast so that I can enjoy life the way I want to enjoy it. And so if you are on board with that idea that it would be better for you to have millions in your 30s than have millions in your 60s, then you got to start changing your, 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 your basis of operation. So that requires that you have to be in control of the money that you create. Meaning, I can go in, I can sell more of X. I can go in, I could do more of Y. I can go in and connect more people of this thing and it can increase my money. 
That is how you will ultimately unlock the income earning machine that's required for you to make your first million dollars. And I say your first million because one million is not enough. We also talked about that uh, last week, but to make your first million. So uh, first thing that I wanna talk to you about, we're talking, uh, so, so ma main point kind of like over, overarching theme here is control Control over the income that you generate is the prerequisite for everything that I'm gonna talk about today, okay? So if you make 50 grand a year, it's gonna be hard for you to implement the things that I'm telling you to today and see an immediate result. So if that is you, that doesn't mean don't pay attention, that means listen to what I'm gonna tell you today and after the show, you need to go back through and say like, okay, where do I wanna go in life? How fast do I wanna get there? And then you need to have a decision, a discussion to figure out whether or not you're in the right vehicle or you're wasting time. So number one, so simple. More activity. You've got to do more of the reach out piece. And again, you could probably look at this and go, uh, oh yeah, that sounds really easy. But I would just turn around and ask you the question right now. Are you making the kind of money you want to make? Are you at a point right now where you're like, I am satisfied with the money I'm making right now. I feel like I'm doing great. I'm on the right track. You know, if, you, if you're in that situation where you can say yes, then maybe you don't need more activity of the kind I'm talking about today. Maybe you need an activity of a different kind. But... If your income is something that you can control, meaning you're probably in a sales position, more activity is the easiest way to get you more money. Easy. Like if you are, uh, maybe all, we have a show probably called The Millionaire Math, uh, somewhere in the history of Young Hustlers. If not, I can talk about that. Um, but you need to know the math of the role that you're in. It's really important because it gives you predictability. So if you know that every 400 calls equals one deal and a deal is worth 500 bucks to you, every additional 400 calls that you can make will get you an extra $500 of income, okay? So most of you, if you're like, man, I'm making 100 calls a day, First of all, we have people that make 250 and 300 calls a day, some even higher than that. When I sold mortgage leads, or when I sold, uh, worked in the mortgage business, we were making like 600 calls a day. So the, the, the amount of activity that you take in a day will determine your, how quickly and how immediately you can increase your income. So let's just say this example works for you. 400 calls equals one deal, and a deal pays you 500 bucks. If you can make an extra 25 calls a day, okay, 25 calls a day, that's uh, 125 calls a week, that's, let's just call it 475 calls in a month, that's an extra 500 bucks a month, okay? Now that may not seem like a lot to you, but it's an increase, okay? And when you start stacking that on the other things that I'm gonna to talk to you about today, then this goes down to this because you get more effective on your calls. So the first thing that you need to figure out, number one, can you control your income? If you can answer yes to that question, then what you need to do is figure out how you can make more calls, okay? If you, this is a great exercise. Take a 15 minute window and for 15 minutes, be super focused, be super efficient, and find out how many phone calls or how many emails or how many Instagram messages, depending on your business, figure out how many of those that you can send out in a 15 minute period of time. Super focused, okay? What you'll find is that, let's just say in a 15 minute period, you can get out 20 messages or 20 calls or whatever, whatever the number is, let's just use 20. By the math, if you could replicate that for 30 minutes and then for 45 minutes and then for 60 minutes, you could get 80 contacts done in an hour. Are you with me? Now, if you multiply that out over the day, oh, that got a lot bigger than I hoped. 
If you can multiply that out over the day, let's just say, let's just say you multiplied uh, 80, 80 contacts times six hours a day, because if you work an eight hour work day, which let's just, for our purposes of argument, let's just say that you're working eight hours a day, you spend an hour on lunch and you spend an hour throughout the day goofing around, okay? That's 400, eight times six is 48, right? Huh? 492. 492, what are you talking about? Is that 420? Eight times six is what? 42? 480, 48? Okay, sorry, my math's a little. Okay, that's 480 contacts in a day. So if you're falling short of this, this is the best way to figure out if you're being efficient with your time. I think just about anybody could focus for 15 minutes on anything, okay? And it, sometimes it, it gets hard after that, but for 15 minutes, you can focus on one thing. So if you in 15 minutes can get 20 contacts out, that means for every hour, you should get 80 contacts. That means in six hours, you should be able to get 480 contacts. That leaves you two hours of an eight-hour day to goof off, okay? Now, some of you are thinking, 480, I make 100 calls a day, and I feel like I'm busy all day long. That shows you how inefficient you are with your time. So when I say more activity, this is more uh, a, a product of you not wasting time throughout the day and being more productive with the time that you have while you're there. So the litmus test for more activity, take a 15 minute block and figure out however, whatever your contact method is. If it's DMing people on Instagram, if it's calling people on uh, uh, making cold calls, if it's d messaging people on LinkedIn, whatever your outreach method is, collapse a period of time into 15 minutes, see how many reaches you can get there, and then you have to start building the discipline to go, okay, now let me see if I can replicate that for 30 minutes. Let me see if I can stay focused and on this track for 30 minutes. And then you add another 15 minutes. It's a muscle, it's gonna take some time, so you're gonna have to build the, into this over time. Let me see if I can do it for 45 minutes. Let me see if I can do it for a full hour. And then what you end up with, and then what you end up with is you end up with an hour of full productivity, and then two hours, and then three hours. Our guys in the office right now, dude, they're on their phones. They're, they're literally shoving food in their mouth, running back. They, they, they leave the, the sales office for probably 15 minutes throughout the day to eat some food and probably maybe 30 minutes throughout the day to grab a drink of water, to run to the restroom or whatever, and they are freaking jamming. So they're super productive. So this doesn't mean that you have to work 90 hours a week and you've got to work every day for 12 hours because if you can be effective in six hours and you can make 480 contacts in a day, which I guarantee you is most is more than what most people are making, you will make more money without getting better. Like if you suck but you make more calls, you'll get more deals. So activity is the dial that you can, that you can lever to start cranking up your productivity without adding any skill at all, okay? So number two, number one thing you can do to make more money today is to find ways to be more productive with your time and make more phone calls. Seems simple, okay? But I'm just gonna tell you, the, simple, the simplest things to do are the easiest things not to do. So you have to find a way to build the discipline to execute on the simple things because if you, if you can execute well on the simple things, then you don't need to be complicated. That's one of the things that Grant uh, is one of his core beliefs is if you simplify things and you make them easier, you'll be more productive. Number two, number two thing you can do immediately today to make more money is follow up. I'm gonna give you like, we do more than what I'm gonna give you right now, okay? But I'm gonna give you five contacts a five-day follow-up program that if you implement this, I guarantee you, you'll get 25% more business, which means you're gonna make more money, okay? It's very simple, okay? Day one, after you talk to somebody, you demo them on your product, the first thing that you're gonna do is after you finish, probably at the end of the day, if you wanna be efficient with your time, log everybody throughout the day that you talk to. At the very end of the day, write a handwritten letter to them and mail it out, okay? 
after you talk to them, write them a handwritten letter, and the same day, send them a text message to thank them for their time and the opportunity, and to re uh, to to re um, to reinforce your confidence that you can help them solve their problem. Natalie, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, I can't tell you how great it was spending a minute with you. I'm so confident that we can solve this problem for you. Look forward to working with you. Something sim simple, quick, and easy. The text message should be sent within the first hour after you talk to them. Uh, and then the handwritten letter could be sent out or can be written at the end of the day. You know, you did five demos or six demos that, that day at nine o'clock at night, whatever, when you're home, write out handwritten letters, okay? Day two, video. You could do these in any order. Like we do the video on our sales team, we do the video on day one, okay? Day two, video. Hey Natalie, Jared over at, uh, at Cardone's office. You know, I know yesterday we talked about uh, follow up for your team and how that was a big issue for you. I would love to uh, help you guys solve this problem and I'd love to run a free sales meeting for your team on follow up. Let me know when I can do it. You wanna send a video message to them, okay? Day three, Phone call. Day four, email. Day five, another call. If you could just do this right here, you will be better than 90% of the people that are following up with customers today. If you could just do this. The bar is so much lower than you think. Like you think you're in the marketplace and it's super competitive and everybody's going after the same customers and like, like you, you're wondering if there's gonna be enough business for you to get and all, this other, all these other things that you, you make up in your head. If you just did this for a period of five days, handwritten letter and text message on day one, a video on day two, call them, follow up call on day three, send them an email on day four, call them again on day five, if that's all you did, I promise you, you'd probably get 30% more business. At least 25% more business. The statistic was 48% of salespeople never make the first follow-up attempt. They talk to somebody and they never even make the first call. 80% of transactions happen after the fifth. Like you are in a different league of salespeople if you followed up for three days straight. With personalized follow-up, this isn't, I'm not talking about full automation, you know, sending canned emails. Like you need to have, that's why the handwritten letter is so, so important because in most places in the U.S., if you do a handwritten letter on day one, when you call on day five, hey, I sent you, in the, I sent you something in the mail, did you get it yet? Most of the time in five days, they've gotten the handwritten letter in the mail. So you need to work through something like this, but I promise you, if you map out a plan for five days of follow-up that's personalized and intentional and you have the discipline to do it, I promise you, you will make more money and you will get more business. In fact, I wanna give you an exercise right now and I guarantee you, half of you won't do this. Okay, we did this in a boot camp recently. We had 500 people in the room. I had them do this and within an hour, three or four of them had already gotten deals, okay? This is how easy this is. Pick up your phone right now, and there's a customer that like, there's a deal you're working right now that you haven't closed yet, okay? Now when I say that to you, there's probably a deal that popped into your head, okay? I want you to pick up your phone right now, and I want you to take a selfie video, and I want you to send the video, and this is what you wanna say in the video. Hey so-and-so, this is so-and-so, I'm going through a program right now about how I can become a more professional business person and I'm trying to better myself in my career and I thought of you because I, I wanna deliver this 10X type service to you, not just now, but when you're a customer and for years into the future. Would love the opportunity to get this deal done. Let me know what we can do to get it done today. Send that video right now. Not word for word, make it your own, but send a video right now. I challenge you. Put in the comments right now if you're watching on Facebook, there's 276 people. If you're committed right now to sending a video, write yes in the comments. Plug in those comments, yes. Just put yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Walter. Walter Thomas, he's committed to doing a video. Do that video right now. Megan Wright, send yo video. Miles, send the video. Jonathan Rupert, these people are committed. Asterios, Donald, thank you, thank you, thank you. Send the video, folks, right now. Don't, don't create an excuse. Don't add time. Don't think of a reason not to. Just pull it out and send the freaking video. We might even get a, a reply back or an appointment or something before the end of the show. And if you do, make sure you post about it. Okay, so three ways to make more money. Number one, more activity. You gotta eliminate the excuses that you're creating for yourself about why you can only make 100 calls or why you can only make 80 calls because I can go back and do a room full of salespeople right now and show you how 200 calls is actually a low target. So figure out whatever the excuse is that's hanging you up. Oh, it's the technology. Oh, it's the CRM. We don't have a dialer. Dude, our guys used to make 250 calls plugging the phone, pushing the buttons with a janky CRM. No excuses, okay? Number two, follow up. Put a five-day follow-up plan in place. Follow this like it is uh, the, the five of the 10 commandments of life. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Get something in place that models something similar to this. Handwritten letter on the first day so that by day five when you make your call, they've gotten the handwritten letter. It personalizes it. Text message, video. Again, we're personalizing the follow-up. This isn't full automation, uh, templated emails. Phone call an email, I would, I would find something of value that relates to the product or service that you offer that you can include in this phone call or in that email. Uh, by the way, guys, this is like, like literally the, the tip of the, the iceberg on what we talk about in Cardone University. So remember I said like, hey, there's 50 ways that you can make more money. There's probably a thousand, and all of them are in Cardone University, okay? I'm giving you three today, okay? And, and, and hopefully my, my thought is, is that when you go through and you take this stuff and it actually works, I wanna see if anybody gets an appointment yet. If you get an appointment or somebody hits you back with a positive response on that video, let me know. Don't, don't you send that video, you better send that video. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Cardone University is where I learned how to do all of this stuff. Like I was literally making $2,500 a month. I was sleeping on an air mattress. I was broke. I had no confidence. I was trying to figure out like, am I ever going to be able to achieve the level of success that I've got in my head? Like you feel like you're, 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 you've got some distance between you and where you want to be. It killed me when I had to realize that because I was like, dude, you're, 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 you're broke all the time. You're, you've got like a friend that's letting you live with them for free over here. Then you're on unemployment for a while. Then you get a job and you're making barely enough money. You don't have any extra money for anything. But in your head, you're like, oh yeah, I've got this money. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You ever feel like, like where you want to be and where you're at now is just like miles apart? Like that gap does not close overnight. It requires that you do things over a period of time. That's why so few people have money because they don't have the discipline to stick into anything long enough to see their product, the fruits of their, their efforts. So like I started doing all this stuff in year one working for Grant. Like it took years. But looking back now, I'm like, man, I got, I'm making seven figures a year. It was worth it. Like, let me just tell you, if you're in it right now and you're like, man, this follow-up thing's so hard and making more calls and the activity thing, it's hard. It's hard to figure out how to do this. Like, my friends are telling me that I'm too committed to the work that I have and I, I should enjoy life a bit and I should do this and I see them with their laptop, laptop lifestyle and I see all this and I see all that and blah, 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 blah. Dude, I promise you, it's worth it. It's worth it because I'm in a position now where I have income because of money I invested with Grant and real estate. I, I, make, I make more money in passive income now than in the job that I had that paid me the most money before I started working for Grant. Like, like I could quit working now and live and make more money than most people in the United States for the rest of my life. Like that is freaking powerful. I don't even, I can't even fathom that. Like I couldn't have fathomed that five years ago or six years ago. 
So my point is, is if, you, if there's a big gap between where you are right now and where you want to be, then you have to start looking at what you do every single day and figuring out how can I get a little bit better at what I do. And that's the last thing. Is number three, you have to improve skill. So number one, Make, find, find ways to take more action throughout the day. Again, the best way to figure out how much you can actually get done is to set aside 15 minutes with no distractions. And for 15 minutes, go ham. I go all in. That will give you an idea if you say, okay, if I did that for 30 minutes, for 45 minutes, for an hour, if I was able to go ham for an hour, I bet you most of you, if you went ham, you know what that means? Hard as a mother, right? Was that, was that like current and relevant? Was that cool? Yeah. Okay. You missed one word, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm being current, you know, with like the kids and stuff today. So dude, you go ham for an hour, I promise you that you'll get more done in that hour than you used to think you could get done in a day. Okay, so 15 minute chunks, how much can you get done? Multiply that out uh, by four to get your hour of productivity and then multiply that by six. Assuming that you have two hours to eat lunch and fuck off, I mean, and mess, <laughs> damn it, and mess, can you clip that out? Uh, and mess around, like all, 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 all throughout the day. Uh, and I promise you, that will get you, that will double your income at minimum. At minimum, that'll double your income. The second thing that you need to do is you need to put a follow-up plan in place. I went over a five-day a five example of what you need to do. If you put a five-day follow-up program in place like that that's personalized, that adds value, that's intentional, and that you have discipline in actually implementing, that right there will probably be worth 25% more business to you. I'm working on how to 3x your money right now, right? Improve your skill. Now, if you're a salesperson, skill improvement, let me just tell you there's three areas that you should focus on. Okay, number one is your opening. The thing you say when you first get on the phone with a customer or a prospect, the first thing you say when you reach out to somebody on your online message, the first words that you say to somebody, like th that first 15 second chunk of time that you invest with a prospect is vital. It's so important. The way you say it, how you say it, if they say not interested in your opening, then how are you pivoting from that and handling that objection? That first 15 seconds determines the course of the entire call. Because it communicates so much. Like, I don't want to give my time to somebody that sounds like an amateur or that they, and that they don't know what they're doing. I want to give my time to somebody who sounds like a pro, who sounds like they've, they're professional, they've practiced, they've rehearsed, they're on their game, and, and I feel like I'm talking to somebody who's worth giving my time to. So the opening is crucial for you, okay? The second most important thing is the fact finding. Most of you aren't getting deals because you're asking bad questions or the wrong questions or worse, you're not listening to the responses. Like, like if you ask the right questions, you can actually have the person before you even get into the presentation of the product, you can have somebody sell themselves. Because by asking questions like a freaking surgeon, you can unlock all the problems they know they have in their business. So before you even get into the presentation of your product, they're going in their head, man, I got a big problem right now. So if you are a master at asking questions and fact finding, there's two types of things that you need to uncover about people. Number one is you need to identify the behaviors that they have within their business that could be creating a problem their lack of doing something, 
uh, the thing that they're doing. There's behaviors that they have in the business and, 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 and I guess you could call those needs. And then there's the actions that they've taken in the past. So there's, there's two things that you can focus on in fact finding that will give you a lot, I mean literally everything that you need uh, to get a deal done. And that's like what is their current situation and their needs and then how have they made decisions in the past. Okay, I could do an entire show just on fact finding, in fact I think I have done them before. But you can, you can go on uh, the needs that they have currently and then how they've made decisions in their past. If you can get those two things, you can get them talking about those two things, then you will have everything you need to get a deal done. The, the presentation actually matters less. The close actually matters less once you uncover these things. Because now you know everything. It's like, it's like if you had cheat codes for a video game, it's like if uh, you were going on a treasure hunt and somebody gave you the exact map to get to where everything's at, like it literally takes the game out of it. But you have to be good at asking questions. And the first question you ask will never get you the answer that you want. What do you guys have the most attention on right now? Uh, selling more stuff. That's not a real answer. The first layer of question that you ask will never be the real answer. You got to get deep. Okay? What's the thing you guys have the most attention right now? Oh, we really want to increase sales. Oh, really? Why is that? Well, you know, um, because, uh, you know, we just, we just want to sell more product. Okay, good. Have you, guys, have you guys always wanted to sell more product? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, what have your sales been like over the last 90 days? Uh, they've been trending down. Oh, really? Why is that? Man, I couldn't tell you. Uh, have you guys lost any salespeople? No. Have you added more salespeople? No. Have you added any new managers? No. Have you guys changed anything? Well, you know, we started doing this new thing where blah, 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 blah. Dude, I asked like seven questions to get down to the real thing. So when you're asking people questions, get them talking. Y'all got this thing twisted up because you think that when you're doing all the talking in the sales call that you're doing a great job. You're wrong. The best sales calls I've ever heard are when the customer does like 75% of the talking you got to crack them open to where they just spew everything. And then you have to do so much less because you don't have to guess. You don't have to talk about, uh, you don't have to talk about hurricane windows when what they really want is they want something more aesthetic that looks better. You don't need to talk about impact. You don't need to talk about longevity. You just need to talk about, hey, you know the house next to you that has the busted ass old windows? You're not going to look like that anymore. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. Let's go. I'm just using an example. But like, like if you ask the right questions and you dig deep down, then you will actually find the real problem. Most of the time, you ask a question, they give you an answer, you run with that because you think that's the real reason. Then you end up getting into the clothes, they don't buy and you're like, and then they ghost you, right? You're like, oh, that's a deal for sure. And then they fall off the face of the earth. And then you're like, man, what did I miss? Dude, you missed because you got lazy asking questions. And then you got number three, the rule of three. There are three objections that you need to be prepared to handle in the close of a transaction you don't need 50, although it would make you way better. And your, if you remember from the first slide, uh, how it went from 200 calls or 400 calls to get a deal to 200, this could take you down to 150. Like all these things are improvements along the line. But if you, if, if, if you could take the top three objections that you get and you had a clear 
confident uh, rebuttal for handling them, you will get more business. Most, most customers don't have the fortitude to object multiple times over and over and over again. Most of them just roll over. I mean, the higher ticket product you, you work into, the, 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 and the more sophisticated the buyer is, the, the, the harder it is for them to do that. But for most people, like when they say, ah, you know, I really need to think about it, and then you move into, hey, com I completely understand. I've been there before. I like to think about things too. Typically, it's one of three things for me. Can I share them with you? Um, when I haven't been able to make a decision and I need to think about it, it's because either one, it's too much money and I didn't want to tell the salesperson. Number two, I didn't think it was going to solve my problem. Or number three, there was just something else that I didn't want to tell them. Which one of those is it for you? Uh, well, the truth is, is I don't get my paycheck uh, until next week and that paycheck's mostly spent because I just got a new car and I got a big payment on it so I really wouldn't be able to do it until two weeks after that when I got my next paycheck. Okay, good. Give me a $50 deposit now and I'll collect the balance when you get your next paycheck. That sound good? Yep. Okay. Boom. Done deal. Like you just have to be able to give them something. I got to talk to my wife. I got to talk to somebody else. How are you going to handle it? If you could just get three objections to where you could handle them, like the right way with a proper rebuttal and not a, um, hey, I need to think about it. Well, why do you need to think about it? Like that's not, that's not a rebuttal for an objection. That's like an opening of a door for a confrontation. You know? So like these are very simple things for you guys to do. We can help you with all of them. We can help you with none of them. It's all up to you. Number one, make more calls. It's easy. Stop making excuses. Number two, be a little bit more disciplined with your follow-up. Okay? Be a little bit more creative. Add a personal touch. And number three, get good. improve your skill. Focus on improving your skill on the weekends. Practice your opening. Get yourself some good fact-finding questions and dig a little deeper. And then pick three objections that you're going to become a master on. All of those things are at least worth a 2 or a 3x in your income in a short period of time. In, in probably 60 days. Let's go to the phones. All right, you got Anna Maria in St. Petersburg. Anna Maria? Anna Maria, what's going on? Thanks for the call. Hey, can you hear me okay? I got you loud and clear. How are you? Good. I can't even believe I'm talking to you right now. Welcome it's to the show. It's an honor. Welcome to the All show. Right, so much. I appreciate that. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you. Let's roll. Okay, so a couple of things. I'm just going to try to break it down and make it super simple. I work for a car dealership in St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm sort of the marketing, social media, sales manager. Mm -hmm. We do about a volume of about 50 cars a month on a, on a decent month, about 50 cars. Okay. We have salespeople that are the laziest people I've ever seen in my life. We implemented a CRM. We put all of our leads from Google, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, where we're banging it out right now into the CRM, and nine out of ten times, the salesperson gets it in a round-robin system, and they don't even make the phone call. Yep. And when they do, they send them straight to the website to view all of our inventory instead of setting an appointment. So we thought, okay, well, let's find new salespeople. So we tried that, fired everybody, found more people. Same problem kept happening over and over again. Then we told the guys, listen, since you keep telling us, that you are commission only and you don't get paid to make phone calls inside this building, we'll put everybody on a salary. So we put all the sales guys, which are only two, on salary. After we put them on salary, they failed to make the phone calls and we got another team in the door. And we decided this time we're going to hire a BDC to assist uh, new sales guys. And we have just struggled and struggled. Where do we turn? Where do we go? What are your thoughts? Well, like you, the first thing is you have to have... Uh, uh, when, when, somebody, when somebody comes to work for you, the expectation that they have, like the, it needs to be a linear relationship as they move and they enter the company. If the expectations that you set up front are, end up being different when they get into the business, then you will have problems always. So when you hire people, you hire them for a role, 
And like, uh, if, if, uh, if your ad is saying, hey, you can make $120,000 a year then doing that job, then you need to be able to show them somebody in that job that's making that kind of money. So as you bring somebody into the organization, if you're telling them, hey, you're gonna make $4,000 a month as an appointment setter, that's all we need for you. We need you to make calls, you have to make 60 calls a day. Like, you have to have a, a, a consistent journey for them to move from interested into your company so there's no surprises. That's a big mistake that, that some sales organizations make is, is they tell people you can make 200 grand and the most person, that, the most that anybody's making is 50. It just won't work. The second thing that you need to do is people have to be, like they have to be motivated to work. And this doesn't mean like rah, 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 okay? What we talk about when we talk about getting an, a team to be engaged is we talk about money. We talk about goals. When somebody comes into the organization, you need to figure out, hey, what are your goals and how much money do you need to get there? And then you need to show, you need to show them how to reach their money and their goals with the vehicle that you're providing them. You can't assume that people are intelligent enough to put all these things together. Like you have to go through and you have to say, okay, you're coming in for a sales job. How much money do you, do you, do you want to make? Oh, I want to make a hundred grand a year. Really? You think that's a lot of money? Let me just show you how that math works out. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to show them how, uh, where that hundred K is going to go. Uh, you're going to have 60 K left after taxes. Uh, you're going to spend, uh, $24,000 a month or $24,000 a year for rent. So that's gonna leave you with $36,000 a year. You got a $500 a month car payment. You spend $500 a month on food. Is that, is that real? More than that? Is it a lot? Just say, okay, so another thousand. So 12,000, so you got 24,000 between car payment, uh, rent, food. You got $24,000 left throughout the year. And you thought the 100000 was going to get you the big house on the water? Let me just show you how that works out. That house on the water is going to cost you $4 million, which is going to leave you with $2 million after taxes. And you're going to have a $35,000 a month mortgage on that house. Like you, you literally have to walk people through this stuff, particularly in entry level sales roles where people don't have the right expectation or the correct understanding of how much, how far money really goes because it doesn't go far. So you have to connect goals with the opportunity that you have. If you do those two things, I, you'll, you'll definitely end up with better people. They'll have better expectations and they'll work better. So, hope that helps. Next caller. You got Faram in Arizona. Who? Faram. Faram? Faram, are you there? All right, you got Cody in Indiana. Cody. Cody. Cody, Missouri. Cody. Yes, ma'am. Cody, what's going on, bro? Hi, how's it going? Good, man. Welcome to the show. Hi. I, uh, so I have a question. Uh, right now, I'm a carpenter, and I work for a deck building company. So my income maxes out pretty quick. And uh, the, the guy that I work for right now, he doesn't have any salesmen. But I was wondering what your thoughts would be on trying to start selling decks for him uh, as well as building decks at the same time, but um, just kind of how to break into that because I got to do something else. To okay, you ready? Money. Yeah. You, you, the first thing is, is you got to say, uh, you got to go to him and you got to have an agreement first. So you need to go to him and you need to go, 
Uh, hey, Nate, uh, I've been working for you for a while. I love my job. I love what I do, but I'd like the opportunity to make more money. Rather than just asking you for a raise, I'd like to help create more income for myself. Let me ask you, if I were able to, on my spare time, identify ways to get you more decks sold, how much would you pay? What would you, what would you pay me? Would you pay me a commission on those deals? Would you pay me 10% of the job? Would you pay me 20% of the job? First thing you need to do is figure that out, okay? Then every time you go on a job and you're working uh, uh, a uh, you're, you're you're building a deck, you need to go uh, ten houses in either direction of the house that you're working on. Like this is a very easy low entry point. Ten houses in either direction. Get some little flyers made with some type of special. Hey, we're we're in the neighborhood special. Uh, uh, y you know, a, a loyalty offer, a uh, companion offer, a, uh, uh, a proximity offer, figure out something. But just go to every door, knock on the door, they come to the door, say, hey, my name's Cody, I'm building the deck for the Smiths down the street and I just wanted to let you know uh, we have a special offer for you guys right now because we're in the neighborhood. Here it is. Is that something you guys would be open to considering doing? That's okay. it. That's it. That's it. Just do that. Go 10 houses on each side. That's 20, awesome. 20 prospects that you can add. If uh, How long does it take you to build a deck for a house? Uh, um, average deck will take three to four weeks. Oh, perfect. Dude, you get the whole neighborhood. Like, like you, if, <laughs> if you pick, if you, let me just, let me just uh, what time do you show up on a job? 6.30. Okay, what time do you leave? Usually around 5. Beautiful. Everybody's going to be home at five. So from five to six, every single day you show up on that job, pick 15 new houses. And go knock those doors. Give them the flyer. All, dude, all you're trying to do is at this point, like, don't try to get great at the sales pitch. Don't try to, like, none of that. Get, get a flyer and get something really basic. Hey, we're down the road uh, doing, my name's, my name's uh, so-and-so with XYZ. We're a few houses down building a new deck for the Smiths because they want to have more barbecues, spend more time outside. I wanted to give you this flyer and let you know that we have a special going right now because you're in the neighborhood. Is that anything you'd be open to considering? Just do that. Don't focus on getting great at that. Don't focus on sinking your teeth in. Don't put any pressure on yourself other than Hey Nate, this is Jared from uh, the Badass Deck Building Company. We're down the road at the Smiths uh, building a new deck for them because they want to enjoy the summer this year, spend more time outside. I wanted to drop this flyer off and just let you know we're in the neighborhood. We got a special deal right now because we're already doing work here. Would that be something that you'd be interested in considering? That's all you got to say. It's that easy. And I'll bet you in that four week period, you start getting in, four week, in a four-week period, let's just say you could only do five houses in an hour. Let's just get stupid, okay? Five houses in an hour, five days a week, that's 25 houses per week. That's 100 houses per month. How much does a debt cost? Uh, the one we're on right now, which is average size, about 30000 30 grand, 30 grand. You think your, your boss would pay you uh, 3,000 to sell him a deal? You think he'd give Sounds you 10 percent? I think so. Yeah, figure that out, because would you spend an hour a day at the end of your day, every day of the week, for a month, if it paid you an extra three grand? Oh yeah. Yep. Dude. This is, there, there's, how much money did you make last month? Uh, like 1700 Dude, you just quadrupled your income. Yeah. With one sale. I got, I got to start going to doors. <laughs> Dude, get, get, get a, go to, go to, uh, 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 what's up, what's up? company, FedEx, Kinko's, and get a little flyer made. 
with the company logo on it. Pay for this out of your own pocket, dude. And tell your okay. boss, be like, hey, I want to bring you business. Would you pay me 10% on deals that I bring to you? You know, I, I, I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't know what your margins are on that stuff, but I don't think that sounds unreasonable. Um, and dude, all you got to do is go knock a door. That's all you have to do. Like, don't put any extra pressure on yourself. Do you think you can go knock on a door? Oh, yeah. Dude, that's all you have to I, do. I, before this, I owned, a, I owned my own company for a year and a half, so that's pretty much all I did. And that company failed miserably, but... Knock a door, dude. Knock a door. Thank you. That's it. All right? One more? Bryce, what's going on? What? What's going on, Bryce? Um, you're on the show. Questions. You're on the show, bro. I actually have two questions. Well, not only one of them is a question, actually. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the network marketing businesses? Uh, I think it's a great option for some people. Okay, well, um, I'm actually calling in today because I'm 16 and I just started my first network marketing business. And I want to do it with everybody who's watching today. Uh, go follow me on Instagram at I am Bryce Plum. Uh, I think everyone who watches this show could come join me, and we could all make, you know, another four grand a month easily. What, what's what's the company? Uh, it's I Markets Live. I Markets Live, and what do you guys do there? Um, well, they sell uh, the forex trading education, and then there's the network marketing side too, which I like a lot. Yeah, awesome. Dude, you got just yeah, got to so you, you, you got you just got to work out you got to work out a pitch, you know. I'm I'm very new. <laughs> yeah. So so the you you did the the first thing which was make the call, but now you got to get good like what we talked about on the first thing today. You got to make that same call to thousands of people. Thousands of people like your friends, your family, your neighbors, people you know, people you don't know. Like if you just started, let me just tell you this. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Do you want to make money doing this? Yeah. It's going to be a hundred times harder than it sounds. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Like I, I want you to, I want you to understand like, like if you can get to the point where in a year you're making six grand a month in the business, forget about the jets and forget about everything that, yeah. that people show you. If you can get to the point in your business where after a year you're making six grand a month, you'll be in the top 1% of people in network marketing. Yeah, and I really think I can do that. Yeah, so you know what you have to do? Every single day you got to work it like a job. This isn't a part-time thing. The people that make money in network marketing companies rarely do the part-time thing. And, they, and it doesn't happen fast for anybody. So as long as you have the right expectations about it, I think that anybody can be successful in it. But I think what happens in network marketing companies is they get sold a dream about part-time income, easy income, and then they're like, oh shit, this is not easy. This is hard, this requires work. My wife's extreme, like she's perfect for the network marketing space. Dude, it took her uh, a year to get to seven grand a month and she spent every day Monday through Sunday, spending some time on the business, but Monday through Friday, she was working on that business seven or eight hours a day. Like it was a job, like she was going in and punching a, t a clock. So get the right expectations so that when you run into hard times, you don't get discouraged and fall off. So if you think, do you have any type of income target or goal yet? Um, well, right now I'm trying to, I want to recruit a thousand people. Like that's my first goal. Right now I'm trying to hit like 50 or 60. Okay. So in, in what time frame do you want to get that done? Probably 60 to 90 days. So you want to get 50 people in 90 days? Yeah, I think I can do that. Assume it's going to take you six months. Yeah, all right, I will. Just assume it's going to take you six months, but you got to show up and you got to beat the freaking door down every day. Send IG messages, send LinkedIn messages, make phone calls. Like you got to freaking burn the place down with activity all day. It'd be hard. So I kind of got this idea that I'd call into the show and see how many people I could recruit from this. Yeah. Show. If you get one, I'll be surprised. 
I'm just being real with you, bro. Thanks for the call. Good luck with you. All good. There you have it. Three ways to make more money. It's really easy. Don't overcomplicate it. Find a no excuses way to make more calls. Get a little bit more creative and add some personal touch to your follow up. Have at least a five day plan. And then number three, improve your skill. That comes at the end. Don't worry about being good right now. Just be focused on making more calls and doing your follow up. Once you get to the skill piece, Focus on your opening, ask better questions, and then handle the top three objections that you can expect from the customer. That is the show every single Thursday. We're here at the same place, the same time on the Cardone Zone, noon East Coast Standard Time. This is Young Hustlers. Everything that I talked to you about today and more is in Cardone University. You can go to CardoneU.com and get a 14-day free trial. It's 97 bucks a month after that. If you can't commit 97 bucks a month to making hundreds of thousands of dollars, then you have the wrong math laid out for you. Coming here is the, the right way to start. Going to Cardone University is the best way to keep it going. We'll be, back, we'll be back here next week, same place, same time. And remember, the only people who condemn the hustle, your hustle, are the ones who've already given up on the hustle themselves. We'll see you next time.